be gone, fuck! What is happening, guys? Cowboy here, and welcome back to more Monster Hunter World Iceborne. And today, we're taking a look at my IG build. Now, it took quite a bit of time to get the insect glaive build together, mainly because I wasn't sure what I wanted to go for. But I have found something that is both a little bit breaking away from the norm as well as quite potent. So to take a look at the build in full, as always, here we go. You can see we got a lot going on here. We have both latent power secret and super recovery, latent power at 7, recovery speed, crit boost, peak performance. There's a lot happening. So before I go into explaining all the gear pieces, what we picked and why... Uh, one of the things I do want to touch on is powering up our Kinsect and then our two new moves. So one of the new things we can do now is in addition to aiming, you can hit triangle and circle to charge your Kinsect. And you'll notice that little red blinking Kinsect thing up next to my 1, 2, 3. And what this allows me to do is I can now extract from two different sources before sending my Kinsect back. So for example, right now you can see it has both orange and red, and I can pull those in at the same time. Now there's two different Kinsec buffs. Uh, if you pick up Slinger ammo from a monster, to do Kinsec power. And this is going to make your Kinsec stronger in addition to creating more frequency with the dust. If you're just using regular Slinger ammo that you find on the ground, you'll get Kinsec spirit. And that's going to increase the stamina bar of it so it attacks longer. And it'll also give you a buff similar to Power Prolonger to extend your actual Insect Glaive buff that's going on. Uh, aside from that, from the air, we can hit the left trigger to do the mid-air claw attack, which can be used as a mount. And more importantly, we gained access to this thing. Watch this. Watch this vault, man. This is crazy. So we vault, mid-air evade, and descending thrust. Look at the distance covered. It's insane, man. You can chase anything down. Look how far we're going. We went all the way at those rocks. We basically just crossed the entire battlefield with that move. Oh, training area battlefield. Anyway. So to take a look at the gear in particular, first up we have the Kadachi Viper Tail 2. Now, you don't necessarily have to use this IG. One of the best things about this build is you can really run with whatever insect glaive you want, and it'll still be effective. However, the one thing I do want to point out is one of the benefits of this build is 100% crit when you have latent power up, and to achieve that, you're going to want an insect glaive that has 20% affinity. With this insect glaive, as an example, I have 10% affinity, and then I have 10% more coming in from those deco slots that I have in there, the two experts, giving me the 20%. Uh, basically, the, the, the break point, if you will, is going to be 40% affinity. So whether it's coming from your insect glaive or your gear or what have you, you need to hit 40% so that when Layton is up, you have 100% affinity. Um, some other considerations, personally, I really do want to use the Ruiner Near Gigante Insect Glaive, but I haven't unlocked them yet, but I think that will probably be my go-to choice, uh, since that Insect Glaive doesn't require Handicraft at all, and instead, I could work in a Razor Sharp Charm, just to help preserve sharpness, as IG tends to eat it alive. So, something to keep in mind as this build evolves, and as we gain access to new gear. Uh, moving on to the actual gear pieces, these I don't see really changing. So, you're going to want two pieces of Fel Shroud, three pieces of Zenogre. Bell Shroud, we're going to run with the Helm Beta, and then the Coil Alpha. Now, this is going to innately give us access to three points in peak performance, which has some obvious synergy with what this build is trying to do. With three pieces of Zenogre, we gain access to Latent Power Secret, and the Greaves, Bracers, and Mail in particular have plenty of Latent Power on them to boost that up to level 7. So it's pretty straightforward, and essentially what this is going to pull together for you is it's going to give you Latent Power level 7, my crit eye is just high enough so that I'm at 40% affinity prior to latent power. Uh, handicraft is up at 4. You could obviously get that at 5 by leveling up your charm. Or alternatively, just switch up to razor sharp and use an IG that doesn't need the handicraft. Recovery speed at 3 to help us recover. Crit boost since we have 100% crit when latent power is active. Peak performance since we're constantly going to be getting back to top health with recovery speed. And this all just comes together beautifully. So to explain latent power and how this works, because you don't really see latent power used a lot in Monster Hunter. It's very much a, a overlooked skill, and it has quite a bit of potency in cases like this. Now, typically, latent power requires uh, 300 seconds in battle to pass, or you have taken 180 damage. Latent power secret decreases those requirements slightly. Instead, you only need to take 150 damage, or 240 seconds have to have passed. So essentially, 4 minutes versus 5 minutes. But what's great about this is when this is up, we're going to have an extra 60 affinity, which with our baseline of 40 puts us over at 100% uh, affinity. So every single attack we do is a crit, whether we're on the ground, whether we're in the air. We're running crit boost level 3 to take advantage of that, so all of our crit damage is boosted to 40% as opposed to the baseline. And then since we have recovery speed, 
constantly healing us up, that is going to help compensate for the fact that we need to take damage to get latent power to proc. So the basic gist of this build is you just get to go ham. You get to go just constantly be on the target. If you're getting hit, it doesn't matter. You got recovery speed giving you a ton of passive healing. Ideally, I'd suggest going for a health augment on your weapon to add in even more healing. And the idea is we are just going to be constantly just going after the target, taking damage, knowing that damage is going to proc late in power. And then when it does proc, you have a two minute buff where you have 100% chance to crit with crit boost. And then obviously all the self-healing has some natural synergy with peak performance. So all in all, there's there's a lot going on with this build, uh, but it's a really fun way to play Insect Glaive, especially if you're a person that likes to, to you know kind of dance around in the air like me, because very often when you're up in the air, you'll get hit by a stray attack, a wing, what have you, you'll take a chunk, and then you got to get down on the ground, put away your Insect Glaive, pop out a potion, heal up. And once you get the health augment, this basically removes the need to do any of that, making it a really fun build. Uh, so there are a couple of very niche decos I have in here. Fortitude Handicraft is one. Flight Expert is another, giving me those those two stray points, which are actually both very nice to have. You can obviously get by without doing this, but the mainstays of this build are you're getting both latent power and peak performance just from your gear. So your gems, you want to hit 40% affinity with crit eye. And then uh, ideally, if you have the critical gems, take three points in crit boost so that you have access to those boosted crits. Which on that note, I want to touch briefly. A lot of people, for some reason, think crit boost adds 40% critical damage. That's that's not how crit boost works. Uh, crits, by default, do 25% of your damage. One, two, and three points increase that from 25 to 30, 35, 40. I don't know why lately, but there's a lot of people in the comments that are like, oh, just use one point of crit boost, man. That's an extra 30% damage. And I'm like, no, y'all, that is that is not how that works. So just to be perfectly clear on that. Uh, but anyway, that's that's about it for this build. You know, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It has a lot of self-sustain. And I don't even have my weapon health augmented yet. Once health augment gets on this, it just gets even juicier. So let's jump on into a hunt, show you what it's capable of. So we're going to be going after a Glavinus for the quest. Um, originally, I was going to fight a Shrieking Legiana, but the Shrieking Legiana quest I have also has a Berioth and a regular Legiana. And the entire time, it's just all three of them fighting each other. Like, I would dung pod two of them away, and then Shrieking would chase after them and fight them in the new area. So I was like, alright, this isn't this isn't going to work. So anyway, instead, go after, uh, go after Glav. Glav's actually a pretty good target for Insect Glaive 2, because you can... A um, little bit of practice, you can basically jump right over his uh, his blade. Anytime he tries to do his blade attack, you're just like, whoop, right on over it. Usually, I think he usually hangs out over here. Definitely, oh, there he is. Definitely a hard target to miss. So for kicking fights off with IG, uh, there's a couple things I like to do. I usually, I'll start with Rocksteady, just because you know that a roar is going to happen. And now that we have that. Charge our Kinsect. And now we go for a wall launch.
Still love that triangle attack for getting them out. You can see already with all the white, I am almost out of sharpness. This is exactly why I was talking about how um, ideally I'd like to go for just a, a baseline hefty sharpness weapon, you know, something like the, the Nier Gigante uh, Ruiner weapon. Layton. Another thing, this weapon right now is not augmented for health gain. Um, with health gain augment, you know, my every every time I do this, my health is like filling up. It's, it gets ridiculous. This Jagras, dude. I have never seen such a brave Jagras. He's like, I'm gonna get you, Glavinus. Keep eating my food. Big Chungus wants the foods. Another thing, which I think I talked about this in my last Insect Wave video, but if you have the camera lock on, like I do, it makes it a lot easier to stay on your target when you're doing your, your aerials.
as our latent. as well sharpen things on up. I think my favorite thing about this build is just like the passive healing we have coming in, like even now, you know. Just by the time we, we get back to him, we'll pretty much be healed on up. I've never done that before. I did not know you could launch them off platforms like that. That is badass. He's limping, so we'll go for the cap. Yeah, I mean, we used, what, we used three potions? Come here, big guy. Yeah, you're going home. I'm gonna do some research, turn you into glavinous steaks. <sighs> That's the bill. So, um couple things I want to note on here obviously as I mentioned we don't even have the health augment with health augment you're gonna have higher uptime on peak performance and you really won't even have to heal I mean we used three heals and they were only in like you know situations where we were below health or more and we actually took quite a few hits so you know it just goes to show how potent uh, recovery speed three with Valhazak is when those two things are put together you're you're pretty pretty sustainable um, so adding health augment to that just makes you even beefier. Um, and then obviously one of the big takeaways is as you saw, even with my handicraft up, really was still burning through sharpness and that's why I, I really think this build is going to... Ooh, recovery up max might. Um, that's why I really feel this is going to transition towards the near gigante because those weapons always have a, a nice fat chunk of raw on them and you don't have to worry about handicraft. But either way... Um, Thanks for coming on by and checking it out. Uh, up next, we are finally ready to go with the Greatsword build. So the Greatsword build will probably be showcased uh, later today, actually. And then following up on that, I will have Heavy Bowgun, and then we will wrap things up with Gun Lance. I know people are probably going to say, where's Hunting Horn? But to be honest, I don't really play Hunting Horn that well. I don't really know much about it, and so I feel I'd rather leave that up to the people that actually play the weapon. So anyway, thanks for coming by, and I'll see you all soon with the Greatsword build.